Hey everybody, this is Casey O'Brien. I'm the Executive Director and Principal Investigator of the National Cyber Watch Center. I want to welcome everybody to today's webinar on critical infrastructure cybersecurity. This is the first webinar in the 2017 webinar series, and as always, we have a great set of panelists and top. Before I turn it over to Christy Jones from George Mason University to kick off the webinar, I want to remind folks to mute their microphones slash phones. If you're logged into WebEx in your participants list, you should see your name in the list. To the right of your name is an icon for a microphone. Click that. Otherwise, you can use the mute feature on your phone. Um, and or if you're using your computer, uh, you can lower the speaker volume until you're ready to um, ready to talk. We'll be recording today's webinar and making it available via the National Cyber Watch Center YouTube channel. And I'll list the URL towards the end of uh, these slides at the end of uh, today's webinar. And those that signed up will be getting an email following today's webinar with a link to this recorded um, session, as well as today's presentation slides, which I, don't, I think they're just going to be a few. Um, if you have any um, questions during the webinar, you can post them in the chat feature of WebEx for those that are dialing in. Um, you can unmute yourself and we'll leave time in between the three panelists for any questions. Otherwise, you can hold them until the very end and we'll, we'll direct those to the appropriate panelists. If you have any technical problems, you can send an email to info, I-N-F-O, at nationalcyberwatch.org. The 2017 webinar series is our third year running the webinar series now. It's the last Thursday of each month. It's an hour long, starts probably at 2 p.m. Eastern time, ends um, at, in this case, 3 p.m. Eastern time sharp. We've got great topics. We record them and archive them for those that aren't able to actually make the webinars themselves. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Christy Jones, Education Program Manager for the Center for Infrastructure Protection and Homeland Security at George Mason University. Over to you, Christy. Thank you. Thank you, Casey, and I hope everyone can hear me. Um, again, my name is Christy Jones, and I'm with the Center for Infrastructure Protection and Homeland Security. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, welcome everyone, and really, uh, we appreciate your support of this webinar. We really are grateful to both um, Casey as well as the National Cyber Watch Center for allowing us to have this opportunity to present this course that uh, we have developed in conjunction with Whatcom Community College. Um, and creating this 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 project, so we're very very grateful. Um, on the phone uh, with us today are two of the curriculum developers, two members of the curriculum development team, and I'll talk about them in a second. Um, and I also wanted to say thank you to them um, for their participation, not only in the curriculum development, but in the participation for today. So just to give you a little bit of background, um, and I won't be talking long about the curriculum uh, that we developed and. Uh, the process. This course was originally brought to us, or the idea for the course was originally brought to us by Whatcom Community College and uh, the principal investigator, Kareen Sandy, who I'm sure most of you know, for um, CyberWatch West. And she was very interested in, after looking at some of the course materials that we created for an initiative that I run in conjunction with the Department of Homeland Security, called the Critical Infrastructure Higher Education Initiative in creating a possible course for the community college level that centered around the cyber dimension of critical infrastructure security and resilience. So in September of 2015, we received funding from Whatcom Community College to bring together a curriculum development team and to begin working on this curriculum. And we are finally now in the final stages of the curriculum. It is available and open to the public, to any um, community college who would like to download the course. And we will be providing the links for that, um, and, and Casey will be able to share that with you at the end of the, of the event. And um, 
it, it's turned out to be a really fantastic uh, curriculum. We're very proud of it. And um, two of the presenters today were key members of that curriculum team. So we had a total curriculum team of four people. Obviously, you know Dr. Margaret Leary. She is the Director of Curriculum Development for the National Cyber Watch Center. She served um, not only on the initial curriculum development team, but also in later, the later development team where we were developing um, exercises and additional learning materials, and she'll talk about that shortly. Also on the curriculum development team, you all know Stephen Miller. He's the Associate Professor and Director for Information Systems um, at Eastern Mexico University, uh, Rio Doso, and he's been a key partner with us since 2015 in the development of this course. Um, also involved was Christy Saunders, who is an adjunct faculty member with Whatcom Community College, as well as Walter Dua, who, is a, who was um, a cybersecurity engineer at the time with SRA International and is also an adjunct, uh, adjunct assistant professor of cybersecurity with Post University and Central Michigan University. So those four people came together uh, to develop the curriculum and we based it primarily on a master's degree course curriculum that we had developed several years ago through this, uh, our initiative. And Kareem was really interested in developing a course that was focused on ICS and SCADA that would be most beneficial for students at the community college level who were in need of developing technical skills in this area, as well as having a really good understanding of critical infrastructure and resilience. So that's really the introduction to the course. I will be on the call throughout, so if you have questions about the course development later, um, we'd be more than happy to share, but I'm very interested in you guys getting the opportunity to really seeing the course in depth. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Margaret Leary, who will be going through the course with you. Margaret? Thank you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, okay, great. Uh, and, and I want to um, not correct something, but I, I want to um, state that uh, my role on this was to work closely with those of us who were developing this course and take the content and, and the suggestions from uh, everybody uh, developed some slides, uh, and to that end, I uh, leveraged considerably the work that uh, Stephen Miller had done, and, and you know, of course, Stephen has developed a an ebook um, on this topic and teaches this actively. And, and Stephen uh, did a tremendous amount of work in developing these team activities, and so he'll talk to more of that later. Uh, but I just wanted to provide some information about how this course is uh, structured and the focus of this. You know, as Steve mentioned, this was a course that was being presented at George Mason at a graduate level. And as such, uh, uh, a lot of it were, a lot of it involved some uh, critical analysis of, of some very deep topics and, and didn't really have the pedagogy that we need at a 100, 200 level program. And so we needed to structure a course um, for community college uh, or for the first two years of, of a program. Uh, but we also had to make an assumption that the individual going into the course had some of the background that they would need to make sense when we started talking about vulnerabilities, threats, et cetera. And so if we look at the course description, it's a very basic course introducing the concepts of industrial control systems, SCADA, um, and some of the tools, concepts, and then uh, a heavy focus on risk, on threats, and on um, uh, the vulnerabilities that you would find in these systems. Uh, in identifying the prerequisites, uh, uh, again, students should already have completed some type of security course or have otherwise been exposed to some basic networking concepts, networking or, or security uh, terminology. Um, technology requirements, this is, uh, uh, you know, browser-based. All of the lectures are online. We, we've got the uh, exercises available to faculty that you could just take this and just drop this right into your program. You could use this uh, 
exclusively. You, you wouldn't have to have a book. However, um, you know, my preference is for a book. I think students like having a book. I even have some students in classes where they're going to open sources and, and they're saying, please, isn't there, you know, some type of textbook? And, and to that end, um, we did have a textbook. We mapped it to the readings that we have in here. And, you know, I'm hoping that the community at large will uh, as as you find a book, uh, as you use a book, we'll uh, start to go through and, and do some of this mapping as well. So, you, you know, we do make a recommendation for a textbook, um, or at least how to use that textbook uh, in conjunction with this course. But the course is really designed uh, to serve as a, you know, uh, um, standalone with, without having to add anything to it. And so, um, we have, of course, you know, the, the objectives and outcomes listed here. These are all mapped to the content within the slides, as well as to the assessment questions. We've provided in each of these, if you look at the uh, modules themselves, you'll see that each of these modules has, you know, the description, objectives that are listed, for instance, here within module one. Um, and I'm not going to go through this in excruciating detail for all of these, but within this first module, you see that we introduce the concepts here, talk about the five key subject sectors here, uh, and define um, a lot of the terms that the student will be using as they go along through the course. Uh, we then have the presentation. Uh, uh, and so you see the slides. Now, what you don't see on the screen here, you don't see the um, Oh, shoot. Oh, I, I, you can still hear me, right? <laughs> Never mind. I thought I had I thought I had lost everybody. What you don't see here are the notes that are included here. So in order to download slides and the notes, uh, you need to do that separately for each of these. Because within here, what I did, I, I really didn't want to load the slides up with a lot of verbiage. And so I have instructor notes that detail or go into detail for each of some of these points. So you see, um, you know, typically easy uh, set here. Oops, where's, hold on. Sorry about that. Um, let, me go, let me go down here. Um, so you see each, each lecture has about 25 to uh, maybe 35 slides with the object with the objective uh, and the content on here. Um, and so again, with the notes then also that and not, nothing is forced as all of you who are teachers know is Nothing is worse than getting a set of slides that someone else has created with no guidance on, on what they're really talking to. So in, in that, again, you really need to have the notes that you can, uh, that can help inform you and, and can also provide you with some extra resources for your students, um, where we've used some of the uh, government standards. Uh, uh, we talked some of those in these slides. Uh, those are detailed in the notes that the students can go and, and also some questions that you could ask the students. Um, within each one. So these are the slides. And what I'm going to do is just walk through some of these modules. I'm not going to go into the slides from this point on, but I'm just going to walk through and, and explain to you what um, uh, what is within the content. The other um, one I wanted to show you is Stephen will go into the team activity. You see, you see here we have hands-on activities, uh, and, and so these are individual activities, but then throughout the course, uh, there was a team activity that was developed that will culminate at this module 12 at the end over here, the sector report, report outs, and Stephen will talk uh, in detail about uh, the content of those. But I did want to point out to you the assessment. So within each of these modules, we've also included about 10 to 15 different questions that, that uh, the instructor can use, along with what is always helpful, along with the answers. Now, the answers we took uh, out of here so that they didn't get um, you know, promulgated to everybody, uh, you, you will have to ask for these from um, Whatcom and they can send them to you just so that you might want to use these as graded assessments. We didn't want them available for students on, on the web since this is a public site. So as we go through here, I'm just going to explain some of these modules. You see the first one here is the introduction. Uh, the next one here, introduction to control system, uh, uh, and, and SCADA, uh, again, drills down a bit more into, um, uh, you know, the, the concepts of, of SCADA, of programmable logic controllers, um, how they're used. Let me go back here. Uh, 
Uh, and then we start talking about the technologies. And of course, with the technologies, we start to drill down a little bit more into the protocols that are in use. We, we start to look at some of the networking concepts as well, some of the hardware uh, that you would find within industrial control systems, and also you know some of the networking uh, administration uh, uh, best practices, if you would, on, on how to secure some of that. Uh, we also then get into a discussion of risk management. This is, as anybody who's ever taught security anywhere knows, sort of, you know, uh, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Do you talk about threats, vulnerabilities first, or do you talk about risk first? Uh, but what we agreed as a, as a team was to open it up with a discussion of uh, risk management in general, why it was necessary, uh, and what some of the processes and some of the frameworks, more importantly, what some of the frameworks are. And of course, we talk about NERC's framework, we talk about NIST's framework uh, with respect to this. So the student gets a, a broad range um, of different risk management frameworks. The next thing that we did was we have a module on threats where we start to drill down more, not only into generic threats against networks to which some of these systems are now attached, but also very specific threats to uh, uh, industrial control systems and data systems. Uh, same thing with vulnerabilities. Uh, we go into a discussion of the vulnerabilities that uh, allow those threats then to be exploited. Uh, and then we, we um, have a discussion on the different types of, of risk assessments. And here the students, of course, get introduced to the Department of Homeland Security CSET tool. Uh, and, and you'll see that there are some corresponding team activities as well as individual activities that the student will use to, to perform their own risk assessment as a project. Um, and obviously the, the follow on to this is well, you know, here are all the threats, uh, all the risks, what do you do about them? And so we have a comprehensive discussion of some of the remediation, emphasizing that you're, you know, really need to uh, uh, build it in that initiation rather than attempting to bolt it on uh, at the end of this. And then we talk about some of the firewall technologies tools, some of the best practices, um, assuming that the student maybe doesn't have quite the level of, of background with intrusion detection, prevention systems, all of these are talked about at a high level. They're not, you know, they're, they're obviously not um, as comprehensive as what you would present in uh, a cybersecurity course at a higher uh, course level, but enough so the student can make sense of this if this is his or her first exposure uh, to some of these security concepts. Um, next, we have a discussion of incident response, and again, we've, we've looked at several different frameworks with respect to this. We talk about the necessity for, for incident response, response, how to contain an incident, uh, how, you know, what the different strategies are uh, unique to each different type of incident that the individual may encounter here, and also the components of developing an incident response plan, and then having the student identify uh, the 14 response, you know, core capabilities covered in the national response framework. Uh, and then everybody loves policy and governance. We have a module on, on policy and gover governance, and of course, you know, this is uh, when you talk um, um, critical infrastructure sectors, you're talking, you know, hugely broad um, uh, group of, of, you know, you know, healthcare, financial, uh, everything. And so all of these are heavily regulated industries. And so, you know, we, we did try to capture uh, some of this. Uh, is that important? You know, HIPAA requirements and, and you know, what the uh, ISACs are, uh, NCIC and, and NIC and all, and introduce those. Uh, resources to the student. Um, and then we talked about trends. And, uh, you know, within the trends, of course, uh, you know, we talked about the Internet of Things uh, and how, you know, it presents new risks uh, and, you know, drones, robots, wearables, so it presents new risks to uh, the community. Uh, and so also, uh, you know, you have to look into the crystal ball a bit and, and take a look at what is out there on the horizon, but also we discussed within here, we included a discussion of some of the ethical issues that uh, the student needs to consider. Um, and then, of course, the, the sector report out, reports out. Uh, sorry about that. So, and this is a team presentation. So this is very a, a very flexible, very customizable program. You could use some of these modules, for instance, if you already have an existing course, maybe you have just a, a different type of, of course, and you just would like to take from these slides and, 
and use them for perhaps even a, you know maybe a three hour lecture uh, over the topic. Certainly you can you know slice and dice this course however you you uh, would like in order to um, in order to use it and, and get your maximum benefit out of it. We've also provided I'll just go through the the supplemental materials. We have the supplemental materials list here of uh, readings and all for the student here. Um, some of the exercise, some of the discussions that we've talked about, you'll find the links uh, there. And then also uh, a sample syllabus. And, and within the sample syllabus, it lays out the you know, presentation, the uh, requirements, objectives, student outcomes, you see, um, and so hands on activity. So it's all, all right here. It, like I said, this is all ready to go. You can just drop it into uh, your program. Uh, I'm planning on actually piloting this in the fall. And uh, so, um, anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Stephen. So I'm going to go ahead and stop uh, sharing my screen. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, good. Thanks, Margaret. Can you all hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Great. Well, thanks, uh, everyone, for uh, attending this webinar and giving us the opportunity uh, to uh, share this uh, critical infrastructure uh, curriculum with you. And uh, part of my role in this was trying to work on the, the uh, hands-on activities and the team activities. Uh, Margaret uh, took care of the, the uh, uh, the content and the uh, uh, assessment uh, areas, so we, it was a good team effort. Uh, what I'll do is uh, just kind of go over first the team activities and then, uh, oh, actually I'll go over the hands-on activities first and then cover the team activities which go through all the modules uh, 1 through 11 and then there's a final uh, report uh, as uh, Margaret mentioned in uh, module 12. Uh, in the hands-on, there's not every uh, not every module has a hands-on. So we have uh, uh, basically right now we have the uh, seven or eight hands-on uh, activities uh, modules one through three. There's a hands-on module five is one that we're working on because of uh, it's going to it's going to require some downloading of Wireshark and that, those type of things. So we're trying to get a sandbox for that. And then the other hands-on uh, modules will be seven, eight, nine, and eleven. So I'm just going to cover uh, a few of these uh, going into uh, uh, the first one. Uh, and a lot of this is based off of uh, of what was uh, what's been done in other like in George Mason, but also what's been done in boot camps and uh, activities that uh, I put together for uh, engineering classes and uh, and companies. Uh, my background, of course, is in SCADA with Exxon Mobil, and so uh, I pulled a lot from that. And I was also on the critical infrastructure uh, framework workshops with Richard Clark from Intisoft uh, or Schneider Electric, and we. Uh, Ended up writing an ebook as a result of working on that uh, uh, in those uh, uh, NIST workshops. So one of the key things uh, that uh, about critical infrastructure is the uh, responsibility of industry uh, to communicate uh, with government organizations uh, about uh, the critical infrastructure. So FEMA actually put together some courses. And that are all online, and so we've adopted those courses in the program. They're they're uh, open source uh, by the uh, federal government, and so uh, it's basically uh, gives students uh, a similar uh, activity that uh, engineers would go through, or SCADA uh, analysts would go through in a corporation that are required to understand what uh, the National Infrastructure Protection Plan is all about, how that works with government, with industry, uh, from, the, from down to the local government organizations and how it works with the community. Uh, and so uh, 
they get a certificate at the end of each one of these. One of the things that I look at this uh, particular activity to be uh, uh, a, a confidence builder for students because I tell them once they've completed the the uh, activity and got and they've uh, obtained the certificate, they've basically done a similar thing that an engineer in the in working in the field or a uh, a cyber analyst or a, a SCADA analyst would have done uh, with their company, uh, requiring them to do that. So most of these companies require uh, those people in those critical infrastructure uh, jobs to understand uh, these three uh, areas uh, from FEMA. So uh, the uh, the next hands on, and we kind of this this whole thing kind of builds both on. Uh, and, and relates back to the team activities. So the hands-on are helping reinforce what's going to happen during the team activities. Uh, so the, in uh, the hands-on activity for, uh, uh, for for section two, for module two, uh, we're looking at understanding more about uh, uh, how to, how PLCs work. And so we actually go out to some. Uh, 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 we download virtual box in this particular one so that uh, the students can can uh, actually go in and uh, uh, run a simulator that looks like a PLC and uh, uh, it's all uh, uh, trial type software so it's uh, it's a 15 day trial but uh, the actual activity doesn't uh, more than uh, two to three hours to uh, to actually go through if, if even that much. Uh, then uh, the uh, hands-on activity for technologies. Uh, this one we're we're looking at uh, explore the inter an interactive graphic uh, secure architecture design, and uh, uh, we send them out to the ICS certs. And uh, uh, there's links out there that would take them to those. Uh, uh, Web pages where they can actually look at a infrastructure and uh, how uh, a SCADA and enterprise. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if this. Let's see if I can get to, to this. This takes it out here. So here's a good example. So they get some. Uh, uh, this is an example of a control system land or corporate land. So this would be a typical enterprise uh, network, and it gives those students uh, information about. Uh, the devices. This is going to be important in their team activity because they're actually going to, and I'll get to that later, but they'll develop their own network, uh, both a corporate network and a control uh, system network uh, as part of their team activities uh, based on uh, uh, this and using some of the other ICS CERT tools uh, that I'll talk about in a few minutes. Okay, let me go back. Uh, So you kind of get the, the feel for this. Then the uh, uh, the next uh, I mentioned that we skipped some of these hands-on. So there's not a hands-on activity before. And if you go to that, it'll just basically uh, give you a a notice that there's no hands-on activity for this particular model module. Uh, five is being worked. So if I go down to seven, uh, we're to Looking at risk assessment activities, so uh, the the whole thing here uh, is mainly it's kind of just a getting prepared for a team activity, but we put that in the hands-on activity to download the Department of Homeland Security's CSET tool, and uh, this is a key tool for because it actually has the critical infrastructure framework uh, standards that are uh, available in that tool. And so they'll learn about those, and also based on their uh, uh, industry category that they, they select, whether it be energy or health, uh, healthcare, uh, whatever, then they would uh, uh, have certain standards that they may follow, and that's all uh, uh, talked about. And should they, they, we actually cover that in the hands-on uh, uh, team activity. So then uh, on eight, we, uh, we're looking at uh, basically this activity is, is kind of looking at uh, how we can set up a digital uh, 
sign code, so they have to go through uh, a hands-on activity to set that up. And then uh, in nine, uh, incident response, the hands-on activity there is uh, for the students to, uh, uh, to actually uh, look at a, uh, an incident that happened uh, either for Olympic pipeline explosion uh, or the, the water uh, services incident that uh, in, uh, in SCADA. And so they have a, a, a paper to review and then they can uh, answer the questions based on the activity uh, that uh, they pick. And uh, they'll write a short paper about uh, what they found out, what are the uh, uh, the pitfalls and uh, what were the lessons learned from those uh, those activities, and then uh, the uh, the last hands-on was uh, on module 11, and uh, this one really is just doing some research and looking at uh, the Internet of Things and how it expands the cyber attack surface for SCADA systems. And uh, what are some of the issues uh, around that, and what's what's uh, that future going to be as far as uh, risk assessments uh, for Internet of Things? So that's kind of the the summary on that. The hands-on activities, the team activity, as I mentioned before, uh, it just continues to build, and basically, it's a portfolio uh, you'll build as you go through as a team. Uh, so we start out uh, identifying what, uh, what, based on what we've gone through in this learning module, uh, you'll select as a team, the team's going to select one of the critical infrastructure uh, industry sectors. And so once they've decided on what, uh, which one they want to, uh, to do, then they will uh, uh, be using that throughout the, uh, the course. They will uh, also uh, develop this as an organization, uh, uh, the whole organization, do some research they'll do on each of the sectors. So uh, that would be lesson one. So you've got your, uh, you've decided what your organization is going to be as some pipeline company, let's say, uh, then uh, you would, uh, the next thing you would do is, is uh, the team objective zero is be the purpose of, of the SCADA systems. You're trying to uh, uh, to build on that organization. So what uh, systems will be used within that organization uh, for SCADA systems? And also, uh, if uh, and doing research, how that might interface in an enterprise network with with your business. Uh, 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 good example is uh, one, a life example of mine is that uh, in a, working for Exxon Pipeline, our pipeline uh, systems, real-time systems, were integrated into our business systems. So that meant there was an interface between the, the business uh, enterprise network and the SCADA. So what kind of exposures would that cause for your company? And so they'll get into those type of uh, questions and activities. Uh, the next thing was uh, uh, is determining the, the different types of networks and the protocols that they'll be using. Uh, and they'll also develop that network uh, for uh, either using a Visio or uh, the uh, CSET tool actually has a diagramming capability there where you can either import uh, the uh, Visio uh, network, or you can develop your own, and there'll be like a, a an example that they can use uh, to get started. Uh, that's in the CSET tool, and then uh, so that co covers the technologies, and then they'll be looking at uh, uh, in, a, in the team activity around risk. Uh, they're going to be given some some uh, access to different uh, frameworks and standards. Uh, and so they're going to look at what are the standards that they have to follow uh, to determine risk and what are the requirements for that particular industry. Uh, they cannot actually just default to the 
to the NIST framework for improving critical infrastructure. Uh, and this was based off that critical infrastructure uh, uh, framework from the NIST, of course, and the Department of Homeland Security, Idaho Labs helped develop uh, the tool and the standards to, to, for that. But if you were, uh, if you're a pipeline company, you may have to look at the TSA pipeline security and incident recovery protocol plan as another standard. And so uh, you may have to run multiple uh, standards in the CSED tool, and so the students get that exposure. Uh, and uh, looking at uh, the, uh, the team activity for threats, they'll look at the they'll actually go out and look at the potential threats uh, through the U.S. Government Accountability Office, identifying different types of threats, and so uh, this is going to help them build that. Uh, portfolio of uh, risk assessment standards and uh, how these threats are going to impact uh, uh, their uh, their infrastructure and their SCADA systems. <clears throat> and then the uh, on uh, team activities for uh, vulnerabilities, uh, this is where they uh, will identify the threats uh, that they've looked at from from the uh, from module five. And then they'll have to they'll have a couple options. They can do a presentation or write a a, a paper uh, about uh, how those uh, threats uh, will uh, impact their, uh, their their critical infrastructure and their SCADA system. Uh, then uh, the the team activity for seven is they've already as an individual task they've downloaded the CSET tool. So that they, they've understand and they've gone through some uh, training on the on the CSET tool as part of their hands-on activity, and so now they will, as a team, go through the CSET tool and actually do a risk assessment, uh, following this, and it'll uh, allow them to put in the right standards for their organization. Uh, as a result, the output of that is, is there's three different outputs. There's a detailed risk assessment which basically can be used as a project uh, uh, management tool. So this identifies, uh, and based on high, medium, and low, the different types of, of, uh, of risks that, are, uh, that need to be mitigated. And then uh, there's a, uh, another report that comes out that's uh, more for mid-management, and then there's an executive summary. The executive summary will help the students will be using that later on to help justify, uh, as, any, as anything else, you have to pay for this to, uh, for uh, mitigating risk. And so the company management has to determine how that's going to be done. And so this gives them some information on that. So those reports would be part of that portfolio that they would put together. And uh, uh, part of that, uh, uh, this section goes into to writing that uh, helping look at the gaps, identifying uh, uh, what needs to be done, and putting together a report for management in addition to uh, the uh, having the uh, uh, executive summary from the CSET tool. So I'll have to take that summary and kind of uh, put it into a, a presentation or a, a, a letter to the uh, management on here's what we need to do, here's the high risk uh, to the company and uh, what we need to do there. And then uh, uh, the incident response, uh, basically coming up with what are we going to do as far as incident response plan uh, for our organization based off the risk assessment we did in the previous uh, uh, modules. So you can see how this is all building uh, Building a portfolio, portfolio as we go along. Uh, the the uh, governance part of it for the team activity. Uh, basically, uh, this is identifying uh, students are looking at the policy and the governance issues for their selected sector, and that kind of goes back to the standards and and uh, the basics on communicating with uh, with the uh, local, state, federal governments, and other. Uh, other uh, uh, industry partners that you may have, and suppliers. Suppliers are key chain 
the supply chain is a big deal in this whole thing, and we get into that as well. And then the last uh, section is just the trends, and again, looking at uh, the team activity, uh, looking at uh, uh, what are the trends, uh, the student team organized the materials for this sector will, uh, for their uh, for their course and look at what are uh, some of the uh, standards uh, that we've already did. Actually pulling together that whole portfolio is basically what this does, everything they've done, and, uh, and then prepare a summary uh, of the team's case study and the results of that case study and uh, where they uh, what they learned and uh, what the pitfalls were. So that's kind of the, uh, the hands-on activity. A lot of it, uh, again, is based off of uh, uh, the, what was what's provided by Department of Homeland Security and uh, and FEMA. So any questions? I'll turn it, the screen back to, or do you want to take the? I'll stop sharing the screen and give it to. Uh, Thanks. Okay. Appreciate that. Just, Michelle Brian, my right screen share. So, uh, I pasted the URL to the courseware in the in the chat room. It's also on my screen. Um, for those dialing in, want to write it down? Library WP as in Paul dot Watcom. That's W H A T C O M dot E D U slash press slash CIC. And there there were a couple questions. One is the and this is for Christy, Stephen, or Margaret, cost of certif what is the cost of the certificates? Was the first question. In terms of the certificates that are offered by in terms of George Mason University? Well I'm not really sure. Um that was from because, a mod. Okay, because our uh, we don't actually offer um, a certificate program. What George Mason University's materials are is they are simply for academic use, for any form of academic institution, and they're for those institutions to be used to create programs within their schools. So we don't offer anything in terms of um, a certificate program ourselves, nor are, are any of our materials for cost. Our, our materials are completely for free, and the materials that are going to be available at this, the, the Whatcom um, Press, um, link will also completely for free. I, I think you're probably right asking about the um, FEMA certificates, uh, and those are free, I believe, and uh, Stephen can address that. Margaret, can you take yourself off speakerphone? It's uh, really hard to hear you. Okay, um, I'm on my computer. Can you hear me now? It's a little better. If you're talking about the FEMA certificates, those are free. Uh, they just have to sign up, and the and the instructions are there for signing in to FEMA for the to take those courses. And at the end of the course, uh, when you've completed this, the the exam that they have there, then they'll send you a link, and you can go download the PDF certificate for that uh, particular course. Uh, these are not easy exams, so but the material. For those uh, exams, the presentation and the and the tutorial and all that, which is all online, uh, I, I think they're very. We've had great success. We haven't had anybody not uh, pass those exams, and you can take them over again if you don't pass the first time. Thank you. Great. Yeah, he was he was referencing the um, the FEMA exams. Um, IS 860, IS 913, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the, and the CSET tool is free as well. I mean, it's Department of Homeland Security uh, that was developed by Idaho Labs. So they'll have to, they'll, we have instructions for that too. They have to sign up, uh, give them their email address and all that. What the purpose is is just education and then they can download it and, and, uh, and then use the tool. The thing about the, the CSAT tool is the versions change pretty much at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. So it's not a bit, we don't try to use, uh, tell them a specific version number. We just say go out and download whatever's there. Sounds good. Thank you. There was another question, um, perhaps some confusion about 
uh, the course where it says, can the course description be downloaded? If I am not mistaken, and this is Christy Jones, if I am not mistaken, I I believe they can be. Um, I will, while we're still on the call, I will go to the website myself and um, take a look at that for everybody um, because I have the link right here. I believe all of those things can be downloaded separately. Uh, yes, they can be. Um, hmm, I think it can be emailed to you, and I believe it can be, I'm sort of looking around the link. I can find out for, for everyone um, if the, the actual uh, course description can be downloaded separately. Um, let me see, I'm sort of okay. trying to. I'll take another question while you're looking at that, Christy, yeah. if that's okay. Um, sure, absolutely. So, Susan asks, was this course developed with Department of Labor TAC funds, that'd, that'd be the Trade Adjustment Agreement um, grant funds? No, we, the, the, the course was developed directly through CyberWatch West. Um, so they provided the funds and their funding came from the National Science Foundation. Um, I'm not exactly sure which uh, of, the, of their grants that they used for that, but they did use supplemental funds directly from CyberWatch West which is most likely the Advanced Technological Education Program yeah. within National Science Foundation then. Okay, great. Um, there was a question from Martin, is this an entry-level course for students in the first two years? Uh, this is Margaret. Yes, it is. And, and again, that was a part of the focus here was to take the um, graduate coursework that Mason provides in their certificate program to take that graduate coursework and put it into an entry level format and, and make it understandable to the pedagogy and that the students need uh, for community college or for the, one of the first two years within uh, a four year program. Thanks, Margaret. Are there any other questions? Just to give a follow-up uh, for, for someone who is asking about just downloading the course description, unfortunately it doesn't look like you can download that as a standalone, but when you go into the link and you click on, um, there's an area where it talks about exporting or printing the materials. If you click on the PDF option, you can go in and just print out or save uh, the course description um, pages page is just one page in and of itself, but there's no other way to, to download it individually. Okay. Unless you go to the, unless you go to the area where it says, um, let me just, I'm going to walk through it just a second. So it, when you go into the items and you hit, um, uh, there is a, cause there's supposed to be a link. Where did I find it? I don't know why I just left. Oh, there should be under table of contents, you'll see export files. And when you click on export files, it allows you to, to export it as a PDF. And if you click on that option, the whole document comes up as a PDF. And obviously you can download that or you can download individual pages from there. Great, that's great. I'll add that to the, um, I'll add that to the PowerPoint presentation that we right. make available. Um, great, thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, great. There was another question from Susan. Would this be a course or are some of the modules transportable for use in a criminal justice or petroleum technology program of study? Yes, I would say that you could use those modules, uh, bits and pieces of it, because some of them actually came from, uh, from uh, some engineering uh, type courses as far as, I mean, they could be used in engineering courses. For example, a CSET tool could be used in a SCADA engineering class at any level, actually, whether it's a, a community college level or a four-year degree level course. Thanks, Stephen. Are there any other questions for the panelists? Lewis, any other questions to you as the the host? None right now. Okay. Um, any final words from our panelists? 
I would, this is Christy Jones again. I would just like to, again, thank you, thank uh, Margaret Leary and, and Stephen Miller for all of their very diligent and hard work on this. Um, even after I kind of stepped out of the project, they continued to work with CyberWatch West to make a really great course um, that actually we're going to be sharing with others throughout certainly this region and around the country. So I definitely wanted to thank them again for their tremendous effort and work. And of course, thank you, Casey and National Cyber Watch, uh, uh, National Cyber Watch Center for allowing us to have the webinar. We really appreciate it here. Yeah, of course. Thank you. It's a great resource. Uh, it's a, a imp extremely important topic. Um, so we'll certainly do our part to make sure we can uh, promote these materials far and wide. So check your inbox for future webinar invitations and links to today's recording, uh, including a link to these PowerPoint slides. Um, and if you uh, want to check out past National Cyber Watch Center webinars, uh, check out our YouTube channel. Thanks to our panelists, Christy, Stephen, and Margaret. And uh, we'll talk to you all next time. Have a good day. Take care. All right, thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.